Okay, so we are logged into the Data Science Workbench, um, and this is a service through IBM. And what we're going to use it for is to open what are called Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebook is this um, format for coding uh, where we mix code and the output of code. It works with a number of different languages. We're going to use it for Python. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and go to Jupyter Notebook here. Okay, now this, uh, this we're going to go ahead and cover the basics of Python programming in this video. So let's go ahead and we're going to import the uh, the the um, the <laughs> the notebook from the GitHub repository. So you'll find the links down below or in your assignment. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and paste that in here. Okay, so it should say learning Pyth learn Python 1 basics, and then dot IPYNB. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. So it says import successful. All right, and we have to set the kernel to Python 3. So um, I'm gonna click OK. All right, so here we are. So this tutorial was adapted from learnpython.org. Um, which I'm not associated with, but um, this is their content, uh, so you should go there uh, to learn more. Um, okay, so uh, so this this line will be printed. Um, you can see right here. So how we're going to do this is um, we're going to read. So learn Python basics. So this is a Jupyter notebook, um, and there are markdown block. Okay, that's this right here. Okay, and that that there's no code to be executed. And then there are blocks like this one down below that actually have code. Okay, so uh, so uh, how, what we do here in, in um, this Python notebook is we actually hit, um, uh, and there's text here to explain all this um, as you go through and work through it. Um, so we can hit enter to edit the text, but then we can hit shift, hold down shift and press enter. And that will actually execute the line here. Okay, so notice that the first thing we're doing here is we actually have a print command from Python, and we hit Shift Enter, and notice that this blank area right here uh, turns into a one, right? So that says that it's been executed, and it prints out. And our first uh, little uh, you know task here is to change this to be Hello World. So I'm going to copy and paste into my in between my quotes there, it says, hello world. I'm gonna shift enter again, and notice this is the output here, just below the code block, okay? Okay, so notice inside here, you'll see that these are comment lines, right? Uh, now, interestingly enough, um, uh, IPython allows you to comment many lines in a row. Say that we wanted to make a lot of lines commented, that might, might be useful to you later on. Shift, oops. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how to go find this. So, so what we do is we go to help and we're going to go to keyboard shortcuts. And you notice that here we have all of our keyboard shortcuts, right? Um, and so you can see we have lots of different keyboard shortcuts. I can't believe I forgot how to make many lines commented out there. Okay, so anywho, uh, I'm sure you can find out how if you if you really want to. There, we don't we don't really need to do that at this point. So let's go ahead and click close. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is indentation. So in in Python, we use indentation to show code blocks. So notice here we have this uh, um, with this x equals one, and then we have if x is equal to one. So we ask the question: Is x equal to one? If that's true, then it's going to then these, this code below it is going to be executed. Now, how we know that this code is part of the if statement, like should be executed if the if statement is true, is that it's indented in. So notice that we can do this a couple ways. We can either one, two, three, four spaces, or we can hit enter right you know, down from the thing that's, uh, and it will automatically indent, right, if it should indent. Also, we can just hit the tab button, okay? Now, in different editors, the tab can be different things, but in this case, it's correct. If we hit Shift Enter, notice that it runs. Now, if I had this wrong, one, it highlights, right? So you see it turn red. If I hit Shift Enter, now in that case, it didn't. It actually did run uh, because it was a comment. Um, but let's take a look at what would happen if we uh, did a regular line of code. Oops. 
and it runs just as well. So, uh, <laughs> which is pretty surprising. It must be a um, a uh, a Jupyter notebook thing. In regular Python code, you have to really watch the indentations. Okay, so we're going to do it right, even though Jupyter notebooks apparently will run it. Okay, so our next task here is to go ahead and uh, and indent things properly. So notice we have a couple of if statements. So this is an if statement. This is an if statement. This is an if statement. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video right here, and you take a you take a crack at at solving this problem. Let's go pause, pause, pause. Okay, so I'm assuming you're back. You've taken a shot at it. So what we need here is we need actually to, oops. So anything that's in the if statement. So in this case, if this is if x is equal to one, we want it to print x is equal to one, right? And then once we're back outside that if statement, we want it to go, we want things to be back to normal. So notice only the things that are inside of the if statement get get a, get a tab over, right? And this can be many levels in. So we wanted to have something where, let's see, we only wanted to, uh, to execute any of this if x was equal to one, we could tab that over, right? And we could even have inside, you know, an if statement in an if statement in an if statement. So if we wanted to go only if x equals one, only if x equals two, only if x equals three, then it would finally get down here. Okay. Okay, but this is good enough for your first try there. Okay, so variables and types. So um, Python supports two types of numbers, integers and floating point numbers. It also supports complex numbers, which will not be explained in this tutorial. So in each of these cells, we're gonna read the comment then execute the code using shift enter. Understand that each line of, of Python code, let's, we're gonna understand what each line of Python code is doing before moving on. Okay, so in this one, we define an integer called myInt, it's equal to seven. Okay, then we print myInteger. Notice that we can print even a number right there. To define a floating point number, you may use one of the following notations. Okay, so my float equals 7.0, print my float. My float equals float seven, print my float. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we get the same output. Notice that a float is just a fancy name for a decimal. Okay, so, so when we say my float equals 7.0, okay, if we just did this, if it was just a seven, my float would actually be an integer type, even though we called it float, right? Uh, but by putting the 0.7, we, we trigger this to be a float, not an integer, right? Because as we all know, an integer is a whole number. Okay, so if a number is a whole number, it's an integer. If a number is a decimal, it's a float. Now, um, that's in Python. Now, let's say we have a whole number, but we want it to be a float anyways. Well, we can take the whole number and we can put it into the um, function float. Okay, and that will return seven as a float. All right, and we can assign it to my float right here, the variable my float. Okay, strings are defined either with a single quote or double quote. In Python, it doesn't matter. Okay, it kind of depends on what you're trying to contain in there. If you want double quotes in your writing, single quotes work very well. Uh, if you have a lot of single quotes, then double quotes work very well. It's entirely up to you. The main thing is that you be consistent. So if you're going to use single quotes, just use them all the time. If you're going to use double quotes, use those all the time. Choose one and go with it. We are now, let's say that you wanted a single quote inside of here, right? So notice that, see how the, the O becomes a different color? Say that we wanted to put something like my string equals dogs, okay? Let's say that we wanted to make a, a string called dogs, right? Okay, and we were using single quotes. And so now what we have is we have dog, but then the string ends because we're using this double, sing, or sorry, the, double, the single quote inside of a string that we've made with single quotes. What I can do is called escape that. And basically all I have to do is put a backslash in front of it. Now notice that my color highlighting gets corrected, right? So that's a really good way to, to, to see that. You see how we have different colors text in here? 
that is made that's so that you can easily see when you made mistakes. So here, if we don't escape that single quote that's inside of our string, it can cause problems. Once we escape it, no problem. See, like when it goes ahead and prints out. Okay, now for the time being, you don't really have to worry about escaping. Just, um, just remember it for later on. Next one, the difference between the two is that double, that using double quotes makes it easy to include apostrophes, whereas uh, these would terminate a string if you use single quotes, and we just talked a little bit about that. So, so in that case, we could have just said dogs, but just used double quotes, right? There are additional variations on, on defining strings that make it easier to include things such as character terms, backslashes, Unicode characters, but these are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but are covered in the Python documentation. Simple op operators can be executed on numbers and strings. So notice that we have this, uh, this plus um, um, operator. So notice that in this case, we have one, which is holding the actual you know, integer one, two, which is holding the integer two. And we do integer one, you know, which is integer one plus integer two, we get integer three, right? Then we can also do that on strings. So we can do what's concat called concatenating strings. So that just means to smush strings together. That works too. Okay, assignments to be done on more than one variable simultaneously. So notice we say a and then comma space b equals three comma space four. We're saying that a equals three and b equals four. And notice when we print, we can do the same thing. We separated the values by commas and they both print out just fine. Okay, mixed operators between numbers and string is not supported. Okay, so if we have one is the integer one, two is the integer two, hello equals a string hello, we can't do one plus two plus hello. Okay, that's just not going to work. You can, you can use simple operators to add the same variables of the same type, so if they're all integers, or you can do, or you know, if they're all strings, um, but you can't mix the types of variables when you're adding them together. Okay, so notice that it gives us this error, right? Now, how would we fix this error? Now, we don't need to really know that at this point, but we could say, um, so we have this, we have this um, built-in function that can actually convert. Let's say we want to convert that integer one and that integer two to a string value, okay? So we would, we would basically what we call, what's called cast the variable. So we take that integer and we turn it into a string, okay? So it would no longer be a number. It's just the character one, the character two. And notice, now that now when we add one and two together, we just smush them together just like we would a string. Okay, let's take a look at our exercise. The target of this exercise is to create a string, an integer and a floating point number. Edit the code below so that each of the following conditions are met. The string should be named my string and should contain the word hello. The floating point number should be named my float and should contain the number 10.0. The enter should be named my n and should contain the number 20. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pause the video right now and take a and take a try at exercise one. Okay, it looks like you're finished. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just um, take a look at the answer here. Notice that when we type, <laughs> this gets me every time. So when we type into uh, Jupyter Notebooks, notice that when I put in a, a, uh, a quote, it actually types two quotes and puts my cursor back in the middle. It's very convenient once you get used to it, okay? My float, 10.0, my int is 20. Okay, now it's gonna test that exercise, right? So if my string equals hello, print string and you know, so we have a string colon and then percent s and it's going to replace that with this. So this is a C style print statement, right? So we have a, you know, our string and then wherever we put the percent s, that's that little code right there is going to look for a string out here, right? This percent is separated by this percent sign of this mod, modulo, right? Okay. And it's basically going to insert my string wherever the percent s is, right? Okay. So if is instance of float, comma float okay so it's testing whether my float is a float and my float is equal to 10.0 okay 
if it's going to print out. Then we do the same thing for my end. Let's go ahead and, uh, and execute this. Okay, so it executed just fine, no errors, and it printed out all of them. That's the type, that's the output that you should see right there. Okay, so that's it for uh, for Python Basics. Uh, good luck. Oh, one last thing. If you're turning this in, or if you need a way to, to turn it in, we can go to Print Preview. And notice the Print Preview shows all the executions that we did and all the code that I've written. That's our print preview, and then we can just do Control P, and you can do if you're on Linux, you can do print to file. Okay, when we choose, you know, whatever file we want, we might print out Python 1.01. Okay, on another system, if you know if you're on Windows or Mac, you should have a PDF printer installed, and you can you know, print out your PDF uh, that shows all of your work. Okay, so that's how you should get something. If you have to turn this in, that's how you should get your file. Good luck.